morning good morning how are you this morning okay good that's I good couldn't back, i couldn't get back across the bridge yesterday i had to double back on 82 and go down 156. <laughs> you're kidding you no know, it was almost up to the bridge below the uh, at the road that goes over to balix you know oh wow gosh what was going <sighs> I wonder, that's weird because they had not indicated that was. Well, I mean, it, uh, there were. Uh, I was the at that point. I was the fifth car. There were they were backing out and going up the hill, but there was still a big long line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I don't know. They must have. They must have been doing something big and stopped it both ways uh, yeah well or i had a problem yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whoop. There's Joanne and Adam. Hey, good morning. Morning. And Bill. <laughs> I'm good. Good morning, yep. Yeah. Where's Bill? Yep. Morning, Bill. Good morning, Bill. Adam, good to see you. Hey, good seeing you guys. How are you? Yeah, How are you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can't David, hear you, David. You're you're on David, your your sound is off. No, it's still on. You're, you're just muted. Your mic's muted. There you go. Here we are. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. So, questions, reports, how is your reverse breathing? I think it's going more naturally uh, day by day, so. Good. That's, that's great. Well, I was on the road since Thursday morning last week, and I got in late last night, so I did a little, although I, I do feel my reverse breathing is going well, but I did a little practice from last week. My yes. little, oh, little excuses, excuses, excuses. I know. I'm yeah. sorry. I was busy watching you con win and then lose. <laughs> or lose and lose. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Mr. Bynum? I haven't done a lot of practice this week, but I have done more reverse breathing, just sitting or Good. walking or that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I think I'm more in touch with it. So, but we did see the eclipse 
and, and, yes. <laughs> and drove an extra four hours to get home from Lake Erie. So, so. Oh, <laughs> oh, good heavens! <laughs> yeah, yeah it was it was good. <laughs> Did you ride, drive back right after the eclipse? Yeah, yeah, and um, so we took we had a path through, you know, back road kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, that worked to an extent, but there, here and there, you can't do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Everyone we, else was doing we, <laughs> it. It took about four hours longer than it oh. would Ooh. take under normal delays. <laughs> and, but uh, yeah, there were places on the Pennsylvania Turnpike that were out of gas and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Did you get total darkness? Yes, yes, we were right on Lake Erie, and uh, we we started in we were in New York State on Lake Erie, and my daughter Rachel, who was the instigator of the trip and the trip planner and everything, we got there the day before. And we stayed at this really bizarre ski resort on Lake Erie, where it looks like the ski lifts maybe have an elevation of. 50 feet or something <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, they actually make snow there <laughs> the corniest ski place i've ever seen <laughs> make powder, powder but they made money like, on uh, the, the alps <laughs> <laughs> wow. but uh, but anyhow the it was cloudy there and uh rachel looked at the map we went to ashtabula oh, um, yeah. oh, yep Met yeah, on yeah. Lake Erie. There was a town park. We got there maybe uh, noontime, and um, it was beautiful. And for some reason, the 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 parking lot filled up completely, but there was an expansive space, so we we weren't we had a little picnic table, and there was nobody uh, within about nice. seventy five feet of us because most oh, people wow. wanted to be down. By the lake for some reason which is a, like a big mud flat going out to the water right didn't yeah. understand the attraction of that but but it was lovely and uh saw the total eclipse and there, there was a little bit of misty clouds uh in front but you could see it clearly so. yeah. well, great. Wow, great. yeah i saw it from cleveland yeah I was you because I was Cleveland? in Cleveland for the for the final yeah. four. We stayed and uh, yeah, watched it in, in the yard. Yeah, yeah. No tra and then decided not to leave because of the traffic. I left that yesterday was smart. morning. That was your best move. <laughs> I was staying with friends, so that made it easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, good. <laughs> okay. Um. <clears throat> In, in whatever work you were able to do with reverse breathing, could you begin to um, use your intent to move the energy? Yeah, I think so. Um, mm -hmm. It seems a, a little easier to use your intent to move the energy with reverse breathing. But uh -huh. I also find that with reverse breathing, I tend to have like a tension point either in the diaphragm or abdomen and i can't seem to do it without that like it like it almost needs a little bit of muscular tension in the abdominal muscles to to help pull in while you're breathing in or to at least prevent yourself from expanding the belly out while you're breathing in hmm so you you do want to try to minimize that as much as possible that's what i figured <laughs> Of course, um, and it uh, eventually. What's kind of interesting is that it really fades to being pretty small. Uh, I don't know if it can. Uh, I wouldn't say that mine has gone completely away, but I have a, a sense of uh, uh, being pretty much able to let go and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I think Adam, it's a matter of practice, probably. Sure. And keeping the focus on on allowing those muscles to relax as much as they can. 
obviously um, there is a certain amount of muscular contraction occurring mm -hmm. because of the the pulling in and, mm -hmm. and pushing back um, but you're gradually trying to to use <laughs> use as much energy as possible rather than the contraction of the muscles okay yeah that's kind of what i figured and in terms of like the physical movement of it we're talking like a marginal amount of movement in the abdomen right like yeah, really small. really not like like pulling the abdomen and you know when you see kids like suck their gut in yeah like it, no no it's small right you want you you don't want to uh, I'll use Bruce's word. You don't want to scrunch your abdomen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice clarification. I'll I'll stop scrunching, David. <laughs> <laughs> um, At the same time, we are trying to feel we are moving our organs to our spine, right? Right. Yeah. My experience is is both back and up uh is that appropriate um back uh, and up of what up the, back <laughs> and up, up the not spine up. up the spine yeah you may feel uh that and certainly um that's um going into the second method of um, reverse breathing okay. um, basically in in sort of the first method uh, you're not trying to go up the spine you're simply going back to it and then coming releasing out okay okay it, i have a similar feeling but it, it's less of like i guess going up the spine like i can feel energy go up the spine but uh -huh. there, there feels like a physical movement up of like the the pelvic floor going up as the abdominals kind of come in so it's like the diaphragm like everything's kind of squeezing in and back towards the spine that's right okay that's right yeah well, uh, it, it uh, for me it kind of matches with the forming the c-curve yes it, and and i feel like i'm pushing from the lower diaphragm back towards the spine and then it sort of waves up to the upper up below the rib cage and then yeah uh, and then re then relaxes as i uh, inhale um yeah uh, you really want those two to to come together um the 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 diaphragm and the and the lower abdomen that those those movements are coming <laughs> in and pushing back together, not not one and then the other. Mm. Okay. Okay, and you're absolutely right. Um, with the C curve, actually, the C curve helps if you can um, really. Um, use that relationship at least i found it does um that that the 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 coming in is actually made easier by virtue of the c curve and the release hmm. yeah uh, absolutely yeah absolutely. it's almost like uh, the c curve the spine is leading uh sometimes <laughs> uh, and the spine can lead absolutely the the three places that can lead are the qua the dantian and the spine so mm -hmm. uh, feeling feeling the spine leading is not necessarily a bad thing <laughs> indeed any other thoughts at the moment um well you had asked about moving the energy and oh yeah uh, i wanted to go back well <laughs> back forever probably uh <laughs> but 
Uh, we talked last week about um, energy versus uh, G. And darned if I can, <laughs> I, I think I understand when, when I can move my energy, but I, I don't have a sense of how that is different from she movement. Uh, and I, I don't, I honestly don't know if I can feel or identify. Yeah, that's the word I want. <laughs> what she is. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, and just uh, an additional question. We talked about the tingling last week, and I, I believe you said that was uh, a shadow of the the chi. Is that correct? Actually, yes. Actually, yes. So, um, when we when we use the when we talk about feeling the energy movement. You're also talking about the chi moving. Um, there will, let's let's not um, confuse things here and and say that there is no chi uh, present when you're oh, moving. Yeah, right, right. Um, but what what we were trying to focus on last week was beginning to feel the chi directly and not just a a general energy movement, but to feel the to specifically feel what the chi is and feel its specific movement um, wherever you're directing it. Is this a physical? Is it something that can be identified as a physical feeling or is it no, more? No, not, not really. It's an energetic feeling. Energetic. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there is a difference between directly feeling the chi and being able, therefore, to direct its movement to wherever you want it to go hmm. than just feeling the energy moving in the body. Okay. So when we work with all the elements that we've worked with previously and we we talk about getting the the energy to move between the spine and the fingertips um, generally speaking you are probably just feeling a general movement of the energy okay which is also the G. <laughs> so this is, it is confusing, but you're not, <clears throat> you have not probably yet directly connected to, to feeling, to, um, to, to identifying the chi itself and being able to direct it specifically rather than simply feeling the flow. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that's that's the <laughs> the nub of my question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you're right, uh, which accounts for my confusion. I'm not just simply not feeling it as a, a kind of separate thing. Yeah, <laughs> a separate and a non-separate thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I recognize the danger of saying that as soon as it came out. Yeah. <laughs> we might as well get it out here on the table. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know that that clarifies anything. <laughs> uh, but well, it. I mean, it. It doesn't make me. Uh, feel the chi <laughs> uh, but it 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 clarifies yes it it, yeah. uh, it, uh, it follows up on what was said last week and i just wanted to be sure i was no that's a very good question i, I 
appreciate your asking it. Uh, absolutely. Do the rest of you uh, have an experience of feeling the chi? Mm -hmm. I've, I've kind of resigned myself to being happy with playing with the shadows for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I do. I feel I do. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Let's see. Uh, clearly, um, let me just say that that Adam and Joanne have been working longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and more deeply, perhaps, uh, in other previous practices before coming to this. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. This does it's not, not from this, this. Yes. This is not saying that Bill and Bill are um, not not feeling what you ought to feel at this point. It's simply it's a matter of time and practice. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I being open. In, dra in Dragon and Tiger, that release and the final one was the place where I think I have experienced that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good. It is hard to explain, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that difference in kind of feeling an energy surge and it's the, yeah, and it's the. Um, and, uh, and I thought the exercise we did last week was kind of <clears throat> a good one to play with in, in um, working towards that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, let's let's talk about a different subject. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody has another another question or comment, um, I'm not trying to shut off. I think you know at this point in this class, I think. The discussion is as important as looking at something something else. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. So don't don't hesitate. So um, <clears throat> we're gonna look look a little more at breathing in reverse breathing, and think about making the breathing soft or hard. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to say, what is the biggest single thing that would differentiate hard and soft breathing? It is that in hard breathing, you're absolutely increasing the pressure inside the veins and arteries, your blood vessels. You can't get hard breathing by just contracting or by trying to crunch or scrunch <laughs> something. <laughs> it is that you have a very strong sense with your mind of those blood vessels condensing and opening and closing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that the feeling that you get, <clears throat> which I have to say is really hard to qualify or quantify, is as though the blood inside the vessels thickens. It's as though it just gets thicker and denser. So if you are breathing, for example, and you're doing hard breathing, you can't, I'm sorry, you can get to where the blood vessels are opening and closing forcefully. And the reason why normally most people would do this is either because their blood vessels are weak or collapsing or really just have gotten into some kind of bad shape so they have to be improved or they have terribly bad varicose veins <clears throat> or their blood pressure is clearly below what they want it to be. So you would want to boost it. Also, people in internal martial arts, for example, <clears throat> use the expanding and the shrinking of the blood 
um, vessels to get power. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a tickle here. They don't get it from the muscles. Yes, the chi is moving through the fascia, but it's actually what's moving through your blood vessels that gets your power out. And that can be used in all sorts of various sports. So that actually comes from hard breathing. Now soft breathing is something else. Soft breathing is done to ameliorate the waves in the mind. Instead of having radical ups and downs, you get angry and then you get all loving and uh, then you're uh, all of a sudden you want to love the world or save the world. So one moment a person says, I, I can't I, or I don't care about money and the next moment they're practically trying to eat dollar bills. So soft breathing is to make everything smooth out. In meditation, one reason why soft breathing is used is that everything is in is yin and yang and tai chi from a human point of view. What this says is that if you have the classic I love you, I hate you, the classic love-hate relationship. The nature of this is Tai Chi, which if you want to be glib about it, just means that we connect and we engage. It doesn't say anything about how. But whatever the source of the yin and yang is, if you want to find the Tai Chi source, just getting the soft breathing can enable you to more easily get into a Tai Chi state. So when would this be used in ordinary life? Let's say you have some project that has to get done, but you're getting stuck in it and you're going back and forth between the yin and yang arguments like a ping pong ball and it seems that you are never going to get out of the trap your breathing soft breathing might enable you along with dissolving to get to where you reach the tai chi point all the possibilities are there this was number one Um, it can release you from a lot of your emotional suffering. But second, it also may enable you to find what is the one thing that you could never see by looking at it from the yin and yang points of view. And that will solve the issue. Bruce gave us a, a personal example talking about um, when he was writing his books, that he often, or now and then, reached a point in the book where he knew it was very important to the reader that the way he explained something would make it accessible. And so one of the things that he used to do that was that he would just stop for a few minutes and get his breath very soft and smooth, and all of a sudden, Tai Chi, with no sense of where it had come from. Obviously, it was inside of him to begin with, but there was no access to it. And it's important to recognize that these are two separate issues. So the soft breath can be used in meditation and soft breaths can make it much easier for your mind to go to that initial starting point. Something is coming up in your meditation that is rattling you. I don't know if it's an idea or a condition or a trauma, 
you get rattled and you start watching the mind leaping about and as if you're in the middle of the ocean's waves and you don't really know where the waves are coming from and you're approaching the freak out point. But if you make your breath go <clears throat> really soft, very often that can bring your mind down to where it can start seeing what's in front of you rather than being dis disconnected to what's in front of you. So these are just some of the reasons why you would want to do soft breathing. Now, if you talk about reverse breathing, whether it's the vertical up and down or center to periphery, you're talking about the inside of your stomach and your internal organs having no sense of tension. It is not that they become squishy, but they get close so that the flow of the breath and the chi that is moving up and down your belly gets smooth. Because very often, if you are upset, you begin to hold your abdomen tight. You have to go past any holding of any kind or any stopping of the breath. But more important <laughs> than that, any holding of the mind the mind holding the breath. Finally, when it becomes very smooth and your mind evens out, then you can do soft breathing. Now, if you're looking for hard breathing, your, in, your central issue is producing some kind of power. And for that, you have to literally make the way you are making your breath come up and down get stronger and stronger. You're searching, sorry, you're sending your breath in a very, very strong way and it feels strong. When you do soft breathing, you have no sense of your breath having any strength what you have is a sense of it being smooth and clear. So these are just different types of breathing that are used for different situations. First of all, in God's plane in the clouds and in virtually all Taoist Nagong practices, you are never tensing your belly. The belly might feel very hard but that's just because of the increased fluid pressure of what's happening throughout the area. But you can make the stomach so that it feels as hard as though a person is, ten is tensing their muscles, or you can make it soft. So it is as though it has almost no solidity at all. It just has fluid flowing through it. Both are used in Taoism, and they enable different functions to occur. Now, how to incorporate this? <coughs> well, if it's hard breathing, the easy way to show it would be um, <laughs> if, if we could have somebody um, put their fists into my belly and see if I could move them by using hard breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you're not here. Uh, <laughs> um, and with soft breathing, uh, there just is almost no, no sense of movement at all. Just a sense of softness and clarity. So, the difference between them is very difficult to see. It really is something you have to feel. And it's something 
that you have to practice. <laughs> so before we uh, play a little with this, um, anybody have a question? Okay. No, I think I <laughs> gotta let that one absorb a little bit. Yeah. Before there's yeah. any questions. Okay. Uh, we don't I, know if we have questions yet. <laughs> okay, you're, we're gonna find out. <laughs> we'll find out. So stand up. <clears throat> Just take a moment to let yourself land. Find your structure. As much as you can, feel the earth beneath your feet and the universe above you. And particularly important, endeavor to allow the mind to extend through your body. Just begin to do reverse breathing. Don't, don't be concerned with soft or hard at the moment. Just establish your reverse breathing. And then see if you can make it hard reverse breathing without tensing up. And remember the point is to increase the pressure in your blood vessels. Now just change it to soft breathing.
Okay, so pause for a moment and just tell me what you're feeling here. <clears throat> what what's happening or not? <laughs> <laughs> what's the difference? It Hard breathing, it felt a little more forceful, uh, almost like the intention was a little more forceful. Um, mm, good. I feel, I feel like the body wants to get involved a lot more, like the muscles want, you know, want to get tense. So it was uh, difficult to stay focused and relax while trying to keep a little more force in the breath. Yep. Um, and then the soft, I don't know, it just kind of felt like normal breathing i guess <laughs> <laughs> okay so i guess question one is soft breathing what we've been doing all along uh it may have been okay i, I um a little hard for me to tell on yeah. zoom i have to admit um but yes, I think I think our tendency, particularly since we certainly had an emphasis in talking about reverse breathing to eliminate the tension, I think yes, our our <clears throat> movement has been towards soft breathing. And ideally, unless you have a specific reason to do it, you would do soft breathing yeah. <laughs> with God's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, hard breathing is only is only done for specific purposes. Some of mm -hmm. which, some mm -hmm. of which I talked about, but there could be others. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we would not. You would not normally do gods with hard breathing. Okay. But I think it's good to recognize the difference between the two because um, so that you don't fall into feeling that using more <laughs> force in the breath would be a good thing in God's because basically it's not unless you have a need for it. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I found a difference um, physically in in the breath coming in. So the hard breath felt that it was going um, more to the back of my throat and down. So there was like a physical reaction where the soft breath, similar to the conversation, you know, between you and Adam felt more kind of like, oh, this is what we've been doing, felt more like like the no, like the nose was involved, and then it went into the body. So in both, I felt them differently in the body, but but I I, I had never been aware of how different it felt coming with breath good. coming in. Good, good. Um, I tried to keep the breath moving, the you know the breathing moving. So consistently throughout and tried to use my intent to build up the pressure. Um, and I did feel something like that, uh, uh -huh. and that you know, released it when you uh, asked us to. Uh, I was sort of chuckling to myself while it was going on because I'm taking a bunch of medications to keep my blood pressure low. So... <laughs> 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 another reason not to do it <laughs> as a regular thing <laughs> anything for you bill well yeah <clears throat> i mean the hard the hard breathing is more defined and easier to know if i'm doing it or not and I think I'm in touch with that. And, uh, I'm. I don't think I'm on the right track with the soft breathing because my soft breathing is just sort of a wimpy hard breathing. And, <laughs> um, it, you know, I just yeah. accentuate it less. And 
Uh, I think I need to work with that more because I'm sure that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah, and you want to feel that it it is um, that it's softening the mind too. Um, that it's that that you're. <clears throat> That you're getting everything to be <laughs> happy, <laughs> to functioning <laughs> functioning easily and smoothly together, mm. and that you're finding clarity as a result, um, because that's mm. you're really trying to arrive ideally in this when we talk about yin yang and tai chi you're you're really looking in gods to arrive at a state of tai chi of balance of equanimity um, and not be stuck in either yin or yang mm. so um, so I'd like you to do a, a um, 10 rep flow um, and and not use hard breathing, <laughs> but see if you can really find soft breathing in doing this. Okay. Yep.
<clears throat> so good. What, did you find that giving you any different experience? Focusing on soft breathing. Sort of. I felt it helped keep the breathing soft. Mm. Um, what was the first thing you said, Adam? I I, I said sort of. Um, it, it helped keep the breathing soft. It helped kind of keep the focus there. And it helped keep the mind soft. Um, oh, especially good. In terms of like incorporating all the elements. Um, and that felt easier. Oh, good. You know, so I, some success, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. I found myself, um, <laughs> in the beginning, a little harder breathing in five and mostly in six. <laughs> I have to kind of watch that and, and figure out why. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's because of the physical movement. It, it felt more like it was the physical movement, not like, oh, it's later in the series. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, it was. I, I did, hadn't expected that. Yeah. I'd be interested to see how that develops as you... Um... I'll have to really watch, yeah, I'll pay attention to that. And, yeah. And, yes, yeah, see what's happening. But I do think it, it, it is the physical movement, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bill or Bill? I felt uh, pretty calm throughout, so uh, <laughs> maybe that's the, uh, the soft that's breathing, the you know. Uh, uh, but I was trying to pay attention to it um, uh, without <laughs> letting the attention interfere with everything else. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess sort of like what Adam was saying, you, you know, you, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, no, well, let it go with that. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the <clears throat> coordinating it with the C curve helps soften it. Uh, you know, thinking about the uh, the C curve isn't an on and off switch, it's a continual motion. So that right. helps uh, in inhaling and exhaling and there be uh, transitional rather than a switch. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, good. Well, it sounds like there was some good connection with that. Um, I'd be interested to hear how your practice <clears throat> goes with this. Um, obviously, um, on Zoom, I really can't tell very much about your breathing. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's <clears throat> that was quite unexplainable. That yeah, so I'm, I'm sort of dependent on what you can tell me about it. Um, one thing I did want to remind you, uh, everyone, that whenever possible, and clearly it's not constantly possible, you want to bring the elbows into the mm -hmm. alignment of the side channels. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the places, there were several places where I could see some issues with that, but particularly in six, um, I noticed um, getting up to the top and arms yeah. coming down with the elbows out. Yeah. And when you're here, down. all you have to do is drop the elbows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but mm -hmm. in, in four, five, and six, um, and two, I mean, yeah, two also, good to, to think about that in all postures. 
<laughs> throughout. Yeah, I think I'm better at some than others. Yeah. Um, I did. It did look to me like seven was um, getting a little better. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it seemed like there was not uh, as much collapsing at the midriff, um, mm. and um, rotation seemed to be coming along. Uh, anyone have an issue about anything there that you'd like to question? <laughs> I have an issue with the whole thing, but no. <laughs> I'm working on it. I, I mean, I think at some point, yeah, when the weather's better, I look forward to being out there and, you know, really working on that. Yeah, good. We'll have a a movement seven class. Yes, I would really uh, like that, actually. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Good. Well, great. Well, have a good week. and um, Thank you, David. Thank yeah. you. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> it should happen this week. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm even home. <laughs> uh, you all next week. Yeah. Yep. See you next week. Bye, Bill. Yep. Bye, Bill. Bye. Bye. So were you disappointed in Cleveland, uh, Joanne? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was um, it was exciting to be there. Uh, there's a lot of great speaking of energy. Uh, I don't know about chi, but energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think I, you know I understand. I, I I didn't think UConn would be in the in the final four, so that was pretty exciting. I do think that uh, there was a really bad call in the last uh, three seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. That could have made it uh, possible that we won, but they made a really bad call. And I thought it was interesting that even ESPN and all the sports people said, yep, bad call, bad call. So it wasn't just the UConn fans. But, oh. um, but I, you know, but yeah, it's a game. I mean, that's the thing is it's a game, right? You know, yeah. like, anyway, I could go more into it, but I, I won't. <laughs> no. I can't stop being a a fan of Caitlin Clark, the hype was the, the commercialism and the everything about Caitlin Clark was pretty overwhelming. So, and uh, she was pretty obnoxious actually. Once there was a Yukon, uh, I think it was Edwards was traveling and she did a traveling sign and like turned around to show the ref. And I'm like, she gets into WNBA, they are not gonna put up with that kind of, hey teacher, she did it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Probably you know, not. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You know, let them do what you you do what you do. Let them, but anyway, but it was fun and it was great to be out there for the eclipse. So that was yeah. cool. Nice to yeah, cool. to be able to experience that. And we didn't have clouds, so I think you know Bill was on his way towards where we were. I remember driving by Astabula. <laughs> um. So yeah, the clouds actually didn't come in until the full sun was back. Um. So. It was, yeah, it was lovely. So good. Great. Mm. Nice. Anyway, yeah, I understand. Rick said that the skunk came out here. He watched it from the garden. <laughs> as soon as it started getting dark, the skunk came out thinking it was nighttime. Well, it was funny. Uh, the birds really went crazy here. The bird, yeah, we had that too. I'll bet you, yeah, where did you see it from, David? Oh, just from our house. You could see it from the yard, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the birds did because you have so many birds there. But yeah, we noticed that too. Anyway, uh, did you get to see it at all, Adam? Or are you locked up in the hospital? Um, only partially. I took a quick peek out the window, you know, with the yeah. special glasses on, right about when it was at the like the full point. Uh -huh. um, it was it was cool to see, but no, I was I was kind of too wrapped busy. up in something. Yeah, too it busy. was a twenty second look and said. All right. Well, if I don't want to be here till five, I better, I better keep working. <laughs> right. Right. So. What's the option? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The trade. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm trying to come up with a game plan. I got a, a a new nurse who's just not doing well in orientation and it, brainstorming with the educators, trying to come up with a way to get them to where they need to be. You know. Yeah. So, mm. wow. Probably. Probably. 
how David feels when he's making our lesson plans here. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with these people? How do I get them to get it? <laughs> Why would they just feel the energy? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if we're messing up, that's one thing. If a nurse is messing up, that's another. <laughs> yeah. A little different, little different implications, you know? Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you could use hard breathing in the form if you like. <laughs> use hard breathing. <laughs> yeah. So, how would you do, would you like switch between soft and hard as you kind of move through the yin and yang of postures or would you just like hard breathe through the whole form um i i think that it would be difficult to go back and forth okay yeah yeah uh, I don't think between so. the two um so uh, i would say you could <laughs> if your body is okay with it if your um, blood system is okay with doing that i think you could could try a flow of just doing hard breathing all the way through but i think it will you know it it will be a different experience and it does focus to the martial aspect rather than um the health Mm. Um, yeah. So, um, but it, it, I, I have played with it a little. I, I would have to say I've not done a full flow with it. Okay. But um, partially that has to do with my particular um, health issues. I don't think that would be particularly a good thing for me to do. Uh huh. Um, Sense. But, um, you know, you, you could play with it. I, I think that basically for what we are trying to accomplish um, in, in our particular study, that doing it prim principally with soft breathing uh, would be the, the better choice. Yeah. Okay. Um, It might be in, if you if you're so inclined um, and you wanted to really focus on thinking about the martial application in each posture, uh, doing a, a a part of the form with hard breathing and focusing that to the the martial application might actually bring some clarity about that. Mm. Um, but I don't. Um, I don't think that you want to do hard breathing all the time. Yeah, I would think that would be too much. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And do, yeah, I, I I didn't practice the form at all this week, but um, you want us to still be concentrating on not moving the arms? <laughs> I kind of hate it, but I do it. You know, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I, I, well, I hate it just because I find it a d difficult challenge, but it, it does force me to do the full body and then, you know, um, and so um, that's good. I think me. you might, you might in particular think about going back and forth between the yeah, two. Yeah, I'm trying to do that anyway. I find that more helpful. Yeah, more of the learning. Because once you've done um, no, no arm movement for a while, um, you really kind of know where your issues are. Yes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yep. So you, you don't really need to be informed about that. And um, you, you probably have already at that point learned that um, it's important to focus on the lower part of the body and not on the hands in particular. Right, right. By that point, you've got that part. Yeah, your, your yeah. body's got that part. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. one of the, an, another really good, um, when you do add the arms, a really good thing to do is to focus on the movement of the elbow connecting to the spine and literally mm -hmm. 
forget the hands. Uh-huh. Right? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. I mean yep. not, yep. not yep. let yep. them go limp, but... Right. Um, no, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because um, that that connection obviously is extremely important and it's yes. continual movement yeah, yeah, is yeah. essential for the movement of the energy. Yes, no, I, yeah, that would, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be another way to approach um, looking at it, I think. No, I agree. That makes um, sense. It, it, you can do, you can really work with that in, uh, the eight gates, both the standing and the and the moving practices, uh -huh. uh, you could use that that focus because in those the you have the continual rotation. Yes, of the right. Yeah, to, yeah. To to bring to that, so yeah. Um, and then taking it into the form. <laughs> and in the gods. <laughs> so. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah, that, that'd be good. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on that this week. All right. Um, any other thoughts or questions at the moment? No. 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 no Hopefully day. more next week. Okay. <laughs> Don't accept more if you practice more, or I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. Very good. Very good. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Have a good week, everybody. Thanks, David. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah,